Finding yourself investing hours every few days creating your audiences? Running out of ideas on how to improve your targeting and achieve better performance? In this video, we'll introduce you to our audience launcher and help you launch your world-class AI-supported targeting strategy within a few minutes. Let's get busy. And as always, open your own Magix account while watching this video and follow along. Our goal is to have helped you launch your first few Magix audiences while watching this exact video. The Audience Launcher is where you can build our famous acquisition, retargeting and retention strategy by creating lookalike and custom audiences. Now, what are we seeing here? Every tile you see is a pre-built audience will launch into its own ad set in your Facebook ad account. All in all, the launching process, once you have done it one, two times, will only take you a minute or two every time. You will have new audiences running in your ad account in no time. As you can see on the left menu, we offer over 80 different types of audiences. Launching them all is of course possible, but will require enormous budgets and it's simply not necessary. How can you choose the best audience to launch? That depends on your account and I'm going to show you how to utilize your data to find the next best couple of audiences for your specific account. Most of our audiences are based on your pixel data, purchase, adds to cart, view content, and so on. We also have audiences based on Facebook data, such as video watchers and page likes. You'll need your individual pixel events to have fired minimum 100 times to build a custom audience and consequently a lookalike audience. If you just started out with Facebook ads and there is no way you have this data yet, you can skip to the part in the video where I discuss the re-engagement and retargeting audiences you should launch first. I also highly recommend watching the video where I talk about interest targeting using the audience studio which will be your best way to start with prospecting audiences. If you're not sure you have enough pixel data, you can always check it in the events manager. We even have a video tutorial explaining how to do that. And you can find the link to the video below. The audiences we want to launch are under prospecting, top seed audience to look like from, niche prospecting, video watchers, Instagram fans, and look like an interest targeting mix, two interest targeting ad sets, and one broad targeting audience. Under re-engagement, we want to go for video casuals or enthusiasts, Instagram and Facebook fans. Retargeting, we stick to visitors 0 to 30 days and 30 to 180 days. On the retention side, we stick to our basic retention 180 days audience. Let's start with three prospecting audiences worth considering for you to launch today. I want to start with a type of lookalike we see working very well quite often. Those using on Facebook data, such as page likes, page engagement data, or video view data. Video addicts, for example, takes all the people who ever watched at least 95% of one of your videos and lookalikes them. I prefer this audience over those who are only going after people who watch more than 75 or 50% of your videos, since most Instagram and Facebook videos are shorter than 15 seconds. So if someone only watched 50% or 75% of your videos, that might not show great interest. If you don't run any video ads, you can go for Instagram or Facebook fans, whichever platform drives more engagement for you. Next, here's an audience we have seen great success with across accounts the top seed audience to look like from. Basically, what we want to do here is take your best custom audiences, create lookalikes based on them, and launch them all into the same ad set. Later, we'll show you how to select the best custom audiences to look like from. To finish our lookalike lineup, let's add niche prospecting from top URLs to the mix. Here we build an audience from people who visited your most important website pages. That's an easy win that almost always drives results. These three lookalikes can be a good basis and now we'll move on to the next type, interests. If you've already watched the audience studio video and created some interest-based audiences to target, you can now add them to the list by clicking interest targeting and audience mixes. If you haven't watched this video, I would recommend you to do that and not skip interest targeting. It's an essential part of everybody's strategy. Last but not least, I want to touch on broad targeting. Broad targeting works better and better for big advertisers. We'll not specify any interests, custom or lookalike audiences, and only let the Facebook algorithm decide who to go after. 
As you might imagine, these types of audiences only work for advertisers with plenty of pixel data. So Facebook's algorithm knows exactly who to target. Also, you're going to need killer creatives to succeed with broad targeting. Let's check in targeting insights in a new tab if you have tested broad targeting before. By the way, keep the extra tab with targeting insights open, we'll need it later. If yes, and it works well, awesome. Definitely follow my next steps and select broad targeting to be launched with Magix. However, if you tried it out, but it didn't work or don't have a lot of data, skip launching this audience. Great, prospecting audiences are selected, but no account will be complete without building the full funnel strategy. That means now we have to focus on re-engagement and retargeting audiences. Failing to launch these would mean a lot of our prospecting traffic we spend a lot of money on will never be addressed again with ads, despite them showing clear signs of intent by engaging with your ads or visiting your website. Let's start with re-engagement. These are users who watch your video ads or engage with your social media pages and by that show clear signs of interest. But then the baby started crying, the phone started ringing and they forgot about it. Let's show them ads again to bring the sale home. I regard the following three audiences to be the most fundamental. First, if you run video ads of any sort, let's build a re-engagement video addicts audience. That's the same audience I recommended to lookalikes earlier. However, if you don't have enough people who watch 95% of your videos, video enthusiasts or video casuals could do the work as well. Next, we can't miss out on Instagram and Facebook fans. These are users who engaged with our Instagram or Facebook ads, visited our social media pages, or even liked them. With these three audiences, we have a solid re-engagement strategy in place. Let's continue to retargeting. These are users who have already made it to your website. Sometimes it takes another two to three touch points to get prospects who are in the consideration phase to actually pull the trigger and buy. Here, I like to keep it super simple. We see too many advertisers overcomplicating their setup. They build retargeting journeys of visitors zero to three days, three to five days, five to 10 days, or any other cadence. And then they show different ads to each audience to walk them through this entire journey. This approach can make sense for big advertisers, but for the vast majority of advertisers, this approach will mean we'll have tons of ad sets that all need budgets, so it's very expensive. Also, the individual audiences will be way too small and struggle to deliver or have sky-high CPMs. Here's what I propose. Select custom recency visitors and in the upcoming steps, we'll launch an audience to retarget your visitors from zero to three days and three to 30 days. Within the first 72 hours after someone visiting your website, we have a hot window of opportunity. During those three days, it's recommended, if not even vital, to show them your ad one to three times a day. This way, we have a better chance to reach them at the right moment when they're free to complete the purchase. Now, reaching your audience three times a day for 30 days will not make you friends. So on the three to 30 day retargeting, we manage our frequency to be significantly lower. All right, looks good. Last but not least, Let's assume you're selling a product people like to buy more frequently. In other words, you're hoping for recurring purchases, you should think about building a retention strategy. This campaign will go after your existing customers, drive more sales and increase lifetime value. There's a beautiful way to supplement your email marketing retention efforts. And again, KISS, keep it super simple. Basic retention that goes after all your customers from the last 180 days is a good way to start. Let's select it and move on. Ta-da, that's it. A lot of talking, but I hope I was able to deliver tons of value and food for thought. In the end, we now have in front of us a solid selection of audiences we can go ahead and launch. Let's do it, the rest is easy. Click next on the top right corner and enter the campaign setting stage. As you can see, the system by default gives recommendations, but you can choose whether to follow them or not. In this case, the system will launch our new campaigns, one for prospecting, one for re-engagement, one for retargeting, and one for retention. Super clean. Always go for the conversion objective when trying to actually sell products or generate leads for your website. When you generate leads via the lead form on Facebook 
of course, go for the lead generation objective. Now, should you go for ad set or campaign budget optimization? CBO is only recommended for prospecting campaigns and only if you have big budget. But how would you know if it's good for you? Remember the other tab I recommended you to keep open? Dive into Auction Insights, filter for prospecting campaigns, and check what's the best method for you on prospecting, CBO or ABO. In my account here, I can see ABO clearly is the way to go. For example, we recommend when launching CBO campaigns to launch around four to eight ad sets within the CBO campaign. Launching significantly more ad sets into the CBO campaign will cause budgets to be spread too thin and Facebook will need more time to test all these ad sets. Consequently, you'll have to wait longer to see if the CBO campaign can turn a profit. For ABO campaigns, that's not really the case in our experience. You can have more flexibility, you can technically launch up to 50 ad sets within a single ABO campaign. Also, in terms of budgeting, try to set your budgets in relation to your cost per purchase. If you have cost per purchase of $30, but you only give your ad sets $5 daily, you'll make it hard for Facebook to drive sales. Our personal recommendation is to set at least one third of your cost per purchase as your daily ad set level budget. When using CBO, go for one times your cost per purchase as the daily campaign budget. On the upside, there is, of course, no limit. You can go as high as you wish, but here I personally, again, like to move in the cost per purchase steps, meaning I give my ad sets or campaigns one time, two times, three times the cost per purchase as a budget. Giving my campaign $45 as a budget when I have $30 cost per purchase means I have an extra $15 that'll often not bring any sales in return. Once that's done, click next and let's select your ads. In the top menu, you have the option to select which ad set to select the ads for. I want to help you be as accurate as any are possible, so we will go by the funnel stage. And again, I hope you can follow me here while watching the video. Always pause and follow the steps. So I go ahead and select my prospecting audiences, filter the ads for acquisition only, and change my time frame to the last 30 days to have representative data. And now I can instantly see all my highest ROS ads listed in front of me. All I need to do is to select my top three to four ads. And now I have my best horses on the track. For prospecting ad sets, we recommend having no more than three to four ads per ad set. More ads might again make things difficult for the algorithm, causing it to take longer to turn a profit. However, on re-engagement, retargeting and retention, we're dealing with smaller audiences who will get tired and annoyed by seeing the same two to three ads over and over again. So here, we have seen good results with ad sets that include around seven to nine ads each. These are of course rough ballpark figures, but we want to make sure you're setting up every aspect of your strategy for best possible success. After selecting the ads for prospecting, you can click on save changes and choose the ads for re-engagement. Here, I often like to go for the same ads I used in prospecting since they will help the audience remember the ad they once showed interest in. Just add three to five more ads to avoid fatigue. Click Save Changes and then filter your ads and select the best for retargeting and retention. By the way, at these stages, you can also use Facebook and Instagram posts and turn them into ads. And next. Now we're in the last major step. Let's fine tune some of the targeting settings. I would recommend selecting all your ad sets at the top menu to save yourself tons of time and set up everything at once. And note how again, when you have to make decisions, we show you all the data to make smart data-driven decisions. What country to target, what agent gender to target, which device, platforms and placements should you choose? All these questions can be answered with the data right in front of you. Please note that by default, you see click data because this kind of data can still be broken down by audience segments for everyone. But ideally, you have set up offline conversions to get ROS data for all the breakdowns. I really, really recommend 
taking a look at our tracking and attribution video. Now we need to select your best custom audiences for the top seed audience to look alike from. Sort your audience by ROS or cost per lead and select your top five audiences for example. These audiences will be look alike and put into one super duper ad set. Let's now select the interest based audiences we've created in the audience studio. Regarding lookalike percentage, we'll go with the default here, zero to 2%. If you have tested many variations, you can go to the targeting insights and check which percentage drives the strongest ROS for you. Last one at least, let's exclude bouncers from the retargeting audience. Retargeting those who've left your website in less than three seconds is just a waste of money since they probably clicked on your link by accident. Let's exclude them. Since we're on the topic of retargeting, Make sure to select the recency of zero to three days as we've discussed. Save it and then duplicate it and change the duplicate recency from three to 30 days. Don't forget to select your Facebook and Instagram pages, of course. Et voila, done. Let's click next to have a final review of the ad sets and names. We recommend keeping the names this way since every setting is reflected in the ad set name. However, if you're an agency owner and you want to white label the assets, you may do that. Then we go ahead and schedule your campaign to be launched at a time of your choice. We'll launch everything right away, but if based on your experience, you know there's a reason to wait for a later time, or the weekend is almost here, which means lower performance, you can schedule the launch for later. Click launch and see all your campaigns launched into your Facebook ad account. If you set them up to launch later, you'll see that they are paused and will be turned on at the time you select it. You can also see your campaigns in the Ads Manager 2.0 in Magix, where I personally optimize my campaigns. Congrats, within a few minutes and without all my talking it would have been even faster, you built an entire full funnel strategy and took deep data-driven decisions when configuring your strategy. This is the work media buyers spend hours on without getting even close to the level of insights and launching power. Hope you enjoyed and launched your first few audiences while watching this exact video. But don't stop here, we're still getting started, there's so much more waiting in the Magix universe to level up the way you're managing your ads. See you in the next video.